Welcome to Flavor Fest. We're celebrating 20 years of leaving his mark. It's extra special, because the last 20 months have been especially dark. It takes extra heart to lead in the urban context. Throwing a pandemic, it makes it extra complex. <laughs> Plus racial injustice and political conquest. It's got us all beyond vexed. See, we've never led in such divided times as these. It's put real leaders in a squeeze. So we pray that Flavor Fest will be like a heavenly tropical breeze, <sighs> giving you exactly what you need to stay in the fight, even when you're surrounded by darkness and it seems that there's no light. Father, we pray today that the light will turn on for many of us, many of us as we've been serving in dark places, in dark times, we felt overwhelmed, we felt anxious, we felt depressed even, we felt confused. But God, I pray that this weekend will be an infusion of new vision, new ideas, new relationships, new hope to go back to our cities and be the light that you called us to be. So God, we thank you for everybody that's gathered here and those that are with us online as well. God, do your thing this morning and the rest of this weekend. God, help us be the light. Family, what's up? How y'all doing? Y'all y'all ready? Y'all ready for Flavor Fest? How's everybody feeling? Come on, make some noise in the house. Those of you that are online. Listen, y'all, this past 20 months or so, 19, 20 months, has been such a crazy time of uncertainty. And uh, it's caused us to rely on God and lean in more than ever before. And as you guys can kind of see and get the vibe, like, around here, you know, we're, we're into strategy. We're into innovation and creativity and, and all those type of things and leveraging technology um, and I believe that God uses those things. How many of y'all believe that? We've watched them use it here in amazing ways. But the formulas that we had before the pandemic and the things that we did, they all got smashed, didn't they? And, and, and so, I mean, just think about it. Like, we didn't meet in person for almost seven months here. Now, if you would have told any of us right before the pandemic, like even weeks before it, like, we're not going to be able to have church in person for a long period of time. We'd have been like, that's crazy. What do you mean? I mean, that's what we do. That's what the church does. We meet together. We worship together. We break bread together. We serve together. We fellowship together. I mean, we, 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 we couldn't do any of those things in person for a season. I mean, it stretched us, didn't it? As leaders, we were scrambling to try to figure out how to keep people connected and checking on people and all kinds of stuff. I mean, for many of us, it even challenged our theology, didn't it? We're like, is, is online church, is that still the same as church? Well, you know, a lot of us fought against that before to some degree, right? Now, like, that's, that's all we had. That's the only, so them, them pastors that were like, we don't do online, like, now you do. <laughs> right? And, and so, I mean, there was so many different things that we had to deal with. And many of you guys here, you didn't have church in person for over a year, much longer than us. Some of you are even in the place now where you used to meet in person, but maybe you, you don't even have a space like you did before. It's been super challenging, and there, there's so many different stories. And so I, I put it out there to some you know, different pastors on my email list and online. And so uh, one of the pastors hit, hit me up, and I said, what's the biggest challenge? And he said, church attendance and giving during the pandemic. Can I get an amen, right? <laughs> That's been a challenge, right? Uh, another pastor hit me back, and there's been a lot of transition during this time as well. People have changed positions, and they're trying to figure out what, where God has them and what to do. Some people have quit. Some people have moved into different things. And so uh, one youth pastor here from Florida took a youth pastor position, and he said, man, it's been really challenging for my leaders to get on board with some of the new things I'm trying to implement in the middle of a pandemic and everything that's going on. I just heard a story a few days ago about a pastor from up north that right before the pandemic, he had 40 people on staff. Now they've got four. Him and his wife are doing the maintenance work around the church now, sweeping up and vacuuming for the first time ever. They've been there for a couple decades, and it's like, man. But you know, it's close to 20% of churches have actually permanently closed their doors. One in five, y'all. 
So if you're still alive and you're still breathing, like, that says something. Now, all of us, we've had our challenges. We, we've been in the same storm, but we've kind of been on different boats and have had different experiences. Some are similar, some are different. You know, here at Crossover, honestly, this has been a season where we've thrived in many categories. I'm going to do a workshop this afternoon. If you're a pastor, I'm going to give a plug. Come check it out. I'm, I'm going to be sharing some of the stuff that's really helped us thrive. But that doesn't mean that it's not been challenging. It's been challenging. When we first reopened our doors, we just celebrated this past Sunday was one year. Uh, about 50% of the people came back. And, and so it, it kind of stayed that way for a little while. It didn't really go up too much, and then it kind of went down a little bit when there was a spike of cases, like in January, and it was just kind of weird. And, but what we noticed is a lot of people were not coming back to church as much. Like people that came every Sunday, they would come every other week now. People that came every other week were once-a-monthers. The once-a-monthers, they would come like every three months, right? And it was like, man, we're... People, we're, I saw them like one time, and so a lot of people had came back, but they weren't coming back like all the time, and it was just, it was weird, it was awkward, it was different, and then the biggest challenge for us was getting people to serve again, because they hadn't served in like a year almost, and so to get them back involved in serving and actively like loving their neighbor, and it was, it, that, that was a challenge, and some of our most faithful servants at the church still haven't come back, and I don't know, some of them are never coming back, I, I don't know. So, so that's been a challenge, but then during the summer this year, our, our numbers really started to go up with the amount of people attending in person. And, and so we really began to notice the squeeze of like, man, we just don't have enough people to serve and make this experience happen with kids ministry and all, all the other things that we do in our church services. We were able to kind of squeeze by for a while because there wasn't as many people coming, but now as the numbers started to almost get back to what they used to, like it was like, oh man, like we, we really need help. And so one of the blessings is, since we reopen, over 50% of the people coming in person are brand new. Come on, make some noise for that. Praise God. We've seen lots of salvations. We've, seen, we've, we've been loving our city, doing all this stuff in the community. So it's almost like, it, it is like half of our church is brand new in the past 12 months. So it's like we're a new church plant almost. And that's exciting and that's awesome, but we're trying to get those people plugged in. And, and get to learn the DNA and disciple them and get them serving and all those things. And so we've been playing catch up. In August, we did a bunch of stuff to get people plugged in. And we got dozens of new people serving. And, uh, but now as we're continuing to grow, it's st we're still playing catch up. It's been a challenge for us. It's a new day. It's basically like we're relaunching our church in the middle of a pandemic. And we thought we were coming out of it, but then we had that another spike of cases, and it was crazy here in Florida. I know a lot of y'all were like, y'all still doing Flavor Fest? We're like, it's going to go down. We're praying. And it has. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, right? But in moments like these, y'all, we can do one of two things. One of two things. If y'all want to take some notes this morning really quick, uh, we can lean in more, and we can seek God for new innovation. Or <laughs> we can rely on human strength and our own ideas and our own innovation. Book of Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, I know y'all have read it. It's a record of different kings of Israel and Judah. And if you read it, sometimes it's depressing because so many of them, they don't follow God's plan. They don't follow God's covenant. They're worshiping false gods, leading the people astray. It's a mess. It's crazy. But in Second Chronicles chapter 14, we see a new king step on the scene, and uh, his name is King Asa. And the first thing it says about him in verse 2, it says, He did what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. Then, then a huge battle came up. A huge battle came up with the Cushites, the Ethiopians, and he cried out to God in verse 11. This is what he said, y'all. He said, oh Lord, no one but, but who? No one but who? But you. No one but you can help uh, the powerless against the mighty because this other army was bigger. And so they're like, we can't rely on our own strength, God, but it's, but it's only you. Somebody say, only you. Look at your neighbor say, it's only him. He said, help us, O Lord our God, for we trust in you alone. We don't trust in ourselves. We don't trust in our own innovation, our own ideas, our own strength, our own weapons, our own army, our own connections, our own skills, our own talent. No, we only trust in you alone. It is in your name that we've come against this vast horde. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere men prevail against you. And so look at what happened. So the Lord defeated the Ethiopians in the presence of Asa and the army of Judah, and the enemy fled. 
The enemy fled. And so, read down a little bit more, you get to chapter 15. And, and the heading of chapter 15 in, in my Bible, I got an NLT Bible I'm reading from. Um, and, and it says, it's a call to revival. In my CSB, it says uh, something like Asa's revival, right? And so it's not often in the scripture that you see the word revival, and it's not often that you see it in the heading of a passage, right? So it got my attention. I'm like, ooh, revival. Because we all want, how many of y'all want revival? We're like trying to revive everything after the pandemic, right? And so you look at chapter 15 in the beginning, and there's this prophet, and he comes to the king. It says, then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed, and he went to meet with King Asa as he was returning from battle. And he said, listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all the people of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Conditional, right? Uh, when you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time, Israel without, was without a true God, without a true peace to teach them, and without a law to instruct them. But now, they were trying to get things right, right? So, so many promises we see in Scripture a lot of times um, are conditional. God's always faithful to his love, his grace, his purposes, right? But with certain things, they're conditional based on what our response is. And so King Asa, man, he took this serious. He stopped all the false idol worship tore down all the different like temples and shrines that were to other gods and they put this huge sacrifice together for the Lord and to seek the Lord with all their hearts and all their souls and we look at verses 14 and 15 really quick and it says this it says they shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring and rams y'all awake with me this morning the ram horn somebody do the ram horn there you go there you go sounding I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. I'm just making sure y'all with me. It says, all of Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all of their what? Their hearts. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him, and the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. Verse 19 says, there was a time of peace and rest for 35 years. 35 years it was peace. King Asa was running things godly. It was all good. But then in the 36th year, ah, he compromised. And it was all downhill really quickly after that. It was really quick after that. What did he do? Well, he flipped the script and he bribed a pagan king to have this, break this treaty with Israel. And then he took some bribe money and he took it from the temple treasury, a.k.a. from the church account. He took God's money to do something that was shady. And the crazy thing was, it was a military success, but it was a spiritual failure. Some of us have, in our own, you know, innovations and moving things around and this and that, it looks like it was a success, but really it was a failure, spiritually, because God's hand wasn't on it, God's anointing wasn't on it, maybe it looked good for a second, and then, you know, it was like, because it wasn't God's plan. It wasn't God's plan. So, so, so look, at, look at what happens next. <laughs> Less than five years later, King Asa, he died of a terrible foot disease. He had this foot disease. Less than five years after he compromised, things went down. He started getting sick and all this stuff. started. He rocked it for 35 years, bro. But in that 36th year, he compromised and everything began to fall apart. So I want to ask you leaders, where are you at in the journey of your ministry? Some of you are just starting. That's awesome. Set the foundation now, right? Some of you might be in the middle of your journey. Some, some of you might be near the end of your journey. But who are you leaning on and depending on in this season? Are you leaning on your own abilities, your own strength, your own innovation, your own ideas? Or are you leaning on God's strength? Here's three quick things I want to leave you with this morning, y'all. Three lessons we can get from this passage in the season like this, coming out of a pandemic, number one is don't compromise God's word. Don't compromise it. And there's going to be lots of opportunities in business and in ministry and all kinds of things that kind of, well, I could kind of, this might not be totally ethical, but, you know, but God, you're going to give me a pass on this because you know my heart. And your heart without him is wicked and dirty, right? Number two, 
Have strong, godly leaders around you that will speak truth. Some of y'all just got yes people around you. You need some people that have permission to check you sometimes because we all need to be checked. You need some accountability. You need some checkpoints in your life. All of us, we've seen ministry people fall before, right? And during this pandemic, we've seen some big ministries fall. Some leaders that some of us have looked up to. Some stuff that broke our hearts. Even people that were already dead and stuff came out. And we're like, oh my gosh, like this is like, man. You gotta have strong, godly leaders around you that'll speak truth, y'all. If you wanna have longevity, if you wanna leave his mark, if you wanna have legacy. And the third one is finish strong. Finish strong and leave his mark. My wife and I, we celebrated uh, 25 years of being in ministry uh, at Crossover this year. Praise God. 25 years of marriage, that's even something better to clap about, right? And praise God, 25 years, no scandals, no church splits, nothing crazy. It hasn't been perfect. We're, we're not perfect. We're human. We're learning. We've made mistakes along the way, this and that. But we're trying to get better and better, and we're watching God move. But, but my, my desire is I don't want to be like a King Asa. 35 years, it was great, and then he compromised, and everything fell apart. And that's, that's, that's how the story ends. That's what you read about. Like, I want all of us to finish strong and leave his mark, y'all. And lean in when there's times of uncertainty and when there's the situations going on like we have right now. Lean in and don't try to come up with your own ideas, but pray and seek God. Like, God, what should we do next in this situation? There's been more uh, difficult decisions that we've had to make in the past 20 months than probably in our whole ministries, right? How many of y'all are with me on that? I, I know when we first shut down, we prayed and we're like, God, what do we do? How do we stay, keep our people connected? How do we serve them? And how do we still serve our community? Because we love our city, and that's what we're called to do. We're supposed to love our neighbor, and that doesn't stop just because we close the building. Like, what do we do? And so we began to pray about it and say, man, people are losing their jobs right now. They're losing income. Like, like God, what can we do? And God just began to lead us and guide us and open the doors, and some of our partners actually began to call us because we already had partners. So, so let me stress this. How many of y'all know there's power in partnership? God can connect those things. So many of our partners were calling us. We started doing ministry. We started doing this grocery drive through in our parking lot with one of our partners, Feeding Tampa Bay. And so we started with do, doing about 300 uh, families every Friday, and then eventually they moved it to Wednesdays, and it peaked out at about 900 families every single week. I mean, we gave away over a million pounds of food over about 14 months of us doing that. And so uh, we, we got to minister to a lot of those people. So I'm always, I'm gonna, I'm, I got the evangelistic gift, so I'm always thinking like, man, how can we, you know, minister to those people? The food's coming up. We got to put it in their car really quick, and you don't really have a lot of time to talk to them, but there's lines that they wait in in the front of the parking lot, right? So I'm like, man, we need to go out in those lines, and we need to go out there and just give everybody water bottles because it's hot in Florida, and they're waiting. So we would just walk out there with water, and a lot of people were like, how much is the water? And I'd joke around, be like, ah, oh, brother, it's $5, but it's only two for you. I'd be like, nah, it's free. And then, you know, cracking jokes and just building with them and, and just ministering to people and, and just listening to their story. How you doing today? How's everything? Is your family all right? And can I pray for y'all? And 99% nine, of them, oh, yeah, please pray for us. We're out in the parking lot praying for people with, with a big thing of water that's in my hand, you know reaching the car, masks on and everything, just, and God doing ministry right out there in the parking lot. This past Sunday, there was this lady that I, I met that came up to me in the lobby. She's like, you're the lead pastor, right? And, and I was like, yeah. She's like, hey, my name is Judy with an I. And she said, you, you prayed for me and my daughter when we came to, we, we've been coming to, we were coming to the grocery drive through and I just wanted to let you know, my daughter's been telling me I needed to come to this church. And I came today for the first time. It was my first time to come to church in 26 years. And, and, and we stopped doing the grocery drive through several months ago. So this was like a while ago. But the seed was planted. So when you love your neighbor, when you plant seeds, you never know when it's going to grow. And you might not even see it. You might hear about it in heaven someday. But plant those seeds. Follow God's innovation. Follow his guiding and directing. Don't try to make it up on your own. He's got a plan for you and your ministry. Don't always look at what everybody else is doing. We can learn from each other this weekend, but your blueprint's going to be a little different than ours. 
and a little different than his and hers and, and his in the back, and, and that's all good, but we can learn from one another. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you today. God, I, I just pray for every leader that's here that we will follow your voice. We'll be guided by your light. We'll find our strength and our innovation and our new ideas in what you tell us, God. God, we can learn from others, and we're going to learn a lot of stuff this weekend. But God, give us discernment of what exactly you have for us. Bless each leader here today. Help us to focus in, God. We're not done yet. You've got some more you're going to pour into us in these next few minutes. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. amen.